All right, we are picking it up here in a big finish um, with regard to a civil 3D project. What we, we're going to show you how to go about changing a couple of things here and seeing how the corridor updates. So if you remember, you hopefully did a couple of things. You started set your environment correct by mapping your drive. You updated your profiles. You used some visual clues to double check that in fact everything was set. And when the last of the one of the visual clues was to go here to tool space and see it looked something like that. Once you did that, you made sure that you had a coordinate system. You would start with a temp correct template like the Wisconsin DOT template, an AutoCAD drawing template. You had gone and um, double checked that you had put the coordinate system that you were working in, uh, State Plane Central, the partic particulars with the, the datum, whether it's feet or meters. You'd done that. You go ahead and you laid it in a cadastral map. If you remember, the cadastral map was, in fact, uh, the kind of property lines, and very often the most important things to do is tie it into a section line, a set of section lines. So we have that here in the cyan. You made a tin in some way, shape, or form. You see, or a surface, and you see here that our tin is called bogus ex topo, the, where the um, cursor there it has an elevation of about a thousand and fifty you actually see here that it's giving you the location of the cursor with regard to your alignment which you've got current so once you had made the topo you drafted in some lines and fillets to design a essentially what would become an alignment it was a polyline with a given direction you define the alignment and you gave it a name and you began not at station zero but at some logical station 10 plus zero zero perhaps you went and made a surface profile and then you went out and made a profile view you put these at the correct coordinate basis and that's where we'll pick it up here because you are putting your drafting at 2,200,000 and your profile at station elevation, you need to be able to use views. And this will be the first time we're going to bring up, hopefully, a toolbar. Right click, um, a set of toolbars that you can start bringing up AutoCAD toolbars. But you have to remember that V for view is an AutoCAD view, and we can go to our overall view. I'm going to set it current there. We can go to V for view for our profile view set current we have that and we go v for view to our assembly and we have that and set current that's great on a multi-view environment because you can also do v ports and set up two viewports here okay and then go ahead and double click in one of them and say v for view and set that to be your overall and leave this one here perhaps to be your profile v for view for your profile view set current ok and now you're to the point where in fact you'll start to see the value and of the the, the dynamic nature of the program so we really don't want to do a lot of this but you once you've got a profile drafted in there you can go ahead and just do some grip edits and if you notice, you changed it here in the profile. It doesn't look like it changed much here in the, in the surface or the corridor. Because what you had done after you made a center line alignment, you had made a proposed profile or a proposed vertical alignment and an assembly. You had then made a corridor by selecting from a list each of those three things. This corridor, and you know it's a corridor by clicking on it, it can be re built at any point in time and if you notice there as I change the cut and fill here it's showing you how that's changing what's happening here so I'm going to go back here and now again change the proposed profile just willy-nilly if you would and we really don't want to do a lot of willy-nilly in engineering there's a lot of iteration there's a lot but we do want to have some thought so as I go ahead and change that, I can hit a rebuild, and it's completely changing your cuts and fills and everything else. In addition, you can change what goes on in the assembly. 
and you don't necessarily need to jump out and I'll go ahead here and say V ports and I don't know let me do with two horizontal all right and maybe I can go V ports and go with three vertical and double click over here V for view for your overall set current OK double click here V for view for your profile set current and double click over here V for view and your assembly so you can kinda get an idea of being able to see things if you visualize more than one screen you can see a lot more in a lot different ways than you can if you're just looking at one part of the world remember this is in the two million two hundred thousand this is in the station elevation and this is around zero zero when you define our major assembly template we're going to do it down around zero zero uh, we'll also have another special place for when you define uh, your cross-section views which are going to be perpendicular to your long profile so you've got all that laid out well let's finally look at the other ways you've learned to play with things and that or change things and that is to go to the properties not necessarily kicking on this clicking on the subassembly but going here and right clicking on the properties of a subassembly and we're going to be looking at the right side and let's go ahead and just change the flat cut slope and the medium cut slope and the steep cut slope all to one to one so we're not going to give the if and ans if then statements we're going to all make them one to one so we've got a one to one flat cut slope a one to one medium cut slope and a one to one steep cut slope And if you think about this, in fact, we also are going to change the steep fill slope to one to one. Because I think we've actually got a fill section. I'm not sure what we have there. We could look and we're going to go ahead and change the fill slope to one to one. And we're only working on the right side, remember, and the medium, we're going to finally go to the flat. Flat both cut and fill to one to one. And just in that, we're going to hit apply. It, we don't apply it, though, until we hit rebuild. And I'm going to zoom in here, and you can see how it brought in that one side here more than the other side. So we've really got a fundamental, and if you look over here, it's kind of depicted what we did with that data. So it's kind of laid out what goes on. You can also, in effect, go back to your assembly and perhaps look at the basic lane right click properties and change maybe one of the parameters to make it instead of 12 foot wide maybe I don't know 36 foot wide want a wide road 36 hit apply hit OK and now remember you still have to go back here click and hit a rebuild and it extended out that road a little bit wider so that is kind of start to finish what you need to do to give you a final fun bit of this let's go ahead and show you a basic AutoCAD command I'm going to check the time here we're going to run out so realize that we can actually do now set a camera point right we can set a camera point camera camera dot x y of here an elevation of 2000 and target dot x y of here with an elevation of 1000 right and now we can say v for view go to camera one set current ok apply and we'll be looking down not too well it didn't quite work out thanks for listening we'll get that working see you bye